So sorry. Hello, how are you today? How you doing? How'd that cookie get there? Now you know decent people like us don't need cookies. <laughs> mm. I'll put that aside for later. Okay. <clears throat> How's everybody today? I have been enabled again. <laughs> By my diamond painting with grace and I went pink just for you. Glitter. Pinky pinky glitter. Holographic glitter. I don't know if you can see the holographic part. But nevertheless. Anyway, wanted to catch up with you guys. I was going to do a little whip and chat and see what was going on. I finally got the lid on my... um. My mood ring cup, it, the lid, <laughs> you know, I, I swear, I find something absolutely stupid and go with the flow. I mean, first of all, I think I'm in a pretty good mood today because there's a lot of pink and a lot of purple and a little bit of green. And, um, so far I think I'm doing pretty good according to the mood ring cup. But, you know when you fill it with ice and it turns into like a solid arctic bucket of ice and you can't get the straw in the cup um, unless it goes all the way on the side. But then you can't get the top part to screw on because the straw is all the way over here. I, I have, I mean, this is a challenge for me today. Today's challenge is the cop. I know. Anyway, I need some advice. I'm going to ask you guys some questions, and I really want to know what you're thinking. So get your little comment keypad ready, uh, because your comments are required today. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I would really like to have them, though. Um... <clears throat> First of all, I am looking for something that is, it seems to be kind of a unicorn. I'm looking for a little boat that is bigger than this boat, higher on the sides, so that when I shake it, beads just don't go flying everywhere. And people are like, what do you mean? You're not a mental person. And yes, you are, because um, 500 beads just went flying everywhere. But it has the little funnel so you can put it back in the bottle. Um, this seems to be my unicorn that I cannot locate. If you guys know anything about a magic boat that is higher on the sides but bigger. See, I love the size of this boat. But the problem is it's got a big wide opening here. And you can't get this in these bottles and I'm working with these bottles because I love this set um so I have to scrape this with a little flat scraper dude into the little boat and then put the little boat into the bottle and it's kind of I think I could save myself a little aggravation but I gotta tell you it is like a big fat dark scary rabbit hole when you go looking for diamond painting boats so anybody who knows anybody hook a girl up okay second question of the day that will require hello george oh god guess who heard mommy he heard me and now we have that to deal with okay let's turn down the light a little bit because it's kind of blaring everybody out um, John's going to mount this thing on the wall so it will not take up any more desk space. I can't wait to see what I get. Okay. Question number two. At what point in your life? Um, and I'm talking to all my friends out there who are crafters and DIYers 
who will DIY and, you know, I mean, I've done it all. I've painted murals on walls. Um, my whole dining room looked like, I mean, I even painted a park bench on the wall. I'll have to find a picture of that and show it to you. It turned out kind of cute. It was very 3D. People tried to sit in it. And it was like, no, no, that's painted on the wall. Anyway, um, at what point in your life when you become a particular age, uh, do you stop doing all these projects? Look at this is going to look so good with all the, like I have a lot of um, pinks and blues that are going to happen here. Hold on. Let me show you. I'm actually polishing my nails to go with, see what I mean? Like all these bright colors are coming. All the neon colors. Like, look. Oh, they're going to be so cool. Oh, I'm getting some glow in the dark uh, beads for these, too. Uh, I got to get with Tima and start the begging process immediately because I, um, it took me a moment, but I went, Ooh, what if I did a little glowy in the darky thing? You know, because I know I'm adding some ABs to it, but I didn't know I was going to do a glow in the dark thing. So that's kind of where I'm going with it. Now, eventually I might diamond paint. I may just sit here and talk to you guys for 20 minutes. Who the hell knows? I'm in that kind of mood today. I need answers to questions. Now, at what point in your life? Do you stop saying, honey, can you do like the honey do list, you know, the little odds and ends or painting a room or laying a floor or, you know, just things that they think they can do, but they're getting to that particular age where now you have to think, huh? How quick are we going to go to the emergency room if long-suffering husband thinks he can manage this and not break any, any particularly useful bones? Like, I mean, I, you know, I don't need him to install a garbage disposal if he's going to break a hip and wind up, you know, in the rehab center. So... <laughs> at what age do you, you, you really just, I feel like I need to have it today. I feel like today needs to be the cutoff day for honey. Can you do this? Um, I feel like today is the day when we start appreciating other people just cause you can't do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it. I mean, I know that you can change the oil in your car, but at what point do you just start writing checks? <laughs> you know, you're either a check writer and an encourager of younger people who are maybe handymen or people who are honeydew or people who want to do and you don't have to worry about them. Uh, you know, breaking any bones if they do, it's not your, it's not my problem. I'll call 911 for you. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, at, at some point I have to talk to long suffering husband in there and make him understand we are going to pay people and they are going to take all of this stress. I mean, you don't know what he goes through. It's a half an hour in a project and little undermined size and whiny little <sighs> grunts, you know, just to get the toolkit out. Okay. So I need to know uh, from my wives out there, at what point do you say, put that shit down right now before I break your freaking neck? I mean it. We're done. I'm not doing this anymore. Like, do I have to threaten physical violence here? Or can I just say, oh, sweetheart, I know you can do that. And you can probably do it better than anybody. See, this is why I think a lot of companies don't grow because the, the, like the soup lady, you know, well, I make soap 
and it is so fabulous. And I make it with a kosher salt, and I use all the kosher ingredients. It comes from a kosher kitchen, and nobody can make soup like me. So, I mean, people have asked me, why don't you make a soup company? But then they show me these big vats, you know, that they put the soup in. That's not kosher. You know what? You think you're the only one in the world who can make soup. Get over it, lady. You know, you can buy some really damn good soups out there. You add a little salt and pepper, put a little um, Worcestershire in it, and zhuzh it up a little bit. Honey, people will think you slaved over that thing for a week. And then you know what happens when they ask you, did you make this soup? And I was like, oh yeah, a secret family recipe. <laughs> Every chef knows a secret family recipe. You know what? I can tell you a quick story. This is so funny. Okay, I, I wasn't going to tell a long story today. I wasn't going to break your eardrums out, but this was so funny. Um, I had just gotten out of culinary school, and my uh, sweet gay tribe, I called them my gay tribe because they're just, well, you can't get any gayer than these guys. These guys are gayer than pink suede in spring, okay? And they were my tribe and my crew and my friends, and I love them even to this day. But um, one of them, Marshall, called me. And all four of us lived together in a house. It was me and my three caballeros. And, oh, we had so much fun. And, um, you know, some of us had culinary skills. And some of us were brand new to it. And, you know, and... Uh, but but we all, nobody was in a contest with each other. We all just loved and appreciated who we were. You know, I mean, Marshall was the uh, connector. He was connected to everybody. He knew people that nobody should be knowing in our tax bracket anyway. So he called us one day at 11 o'clock and he said, don't panic, but I'm bringing a chef home for uh, cocktails and uh, appetizers this evening at 5 p.m. Don't freak out and tell Joanna to stop crying. And that was the voicemail because back then we had actual voicemail. You had a box. Remember the box? <laughs> you have four new messages or you have, and if you had no new messages, oh God. You just needed, you know, Dr. Phil or something. It was terrible, terrible to have a day with no message. I would call me myself a message, but I would never have zero messages. I had such an ego about the freaking voicemail. Anyway, he was coming over. I was losing hair and schwitzing like a lunatic. I mean, I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? This house is a mess. We got to clean the house. We got to, we got, we've got to fluff these pillows. They're not chopped in the middle. Do something. And the other two are looking at me like, oh shit, here's the part where Miss Fang drops her little basket. And, and he was right. I did. I just dropped my basket. So I had nothing. In the refrigerator. I mean, it's amazing how chefs just never shop. <laughs> we, we never have food. We go out and eat, you know. And Monday night at any given restaurant, I mean, really good restaurant, that's where you're going to find all of us chefs. We always go out on Monday night. It's not crowded. We know we're going to get good service. We know there's not a bunch of loud drunks two tables over. It is the unknown but known secret. So, if you ever want to meet really fabulous chefs like us, <laughs> and even a few celebrity wannabes, you know, go out on a Monday night. You'd be amazed. You'll be amazed at the difference in the atmosphere. It's just lovely. Anyway, and chefs, really good chefs, never work on Monday night. <laughs> 
<laughs> but some of the good restaurant chefs actually will prefer it now because they know they're cooking for some really, really interesting people. And they live to feed you their best new invention. And I am there for you. I am all in. I am there for it. Anyway, so this guy comes, he's coming with a chef. And it's a chef that we know. If I mentioned his name, you would know it. And you would go, what the hell was that guy doing at your house? Well, it's a long story, but it happened. Anyway, <clears throat> I had a bunch of the little weenies, you know, the kind that, you know, those little baby sausages. And I got out bourbon and brown sugar and barbecue sauce. And, and, and I made, I actually, you know, uh, cooked a little pot of smoke out on the grill. So it would be like smoky water. So it would have that flavor. And then, um, believe it or not. And you can, you can try me on this. I don't care. I added Pepsi. So it was a Pepsi barbecue sauce. And I stewed those little tiny weenies in that thing until those weenies were so delicate. They were just like begging, please get us out of the pot. Get us out of the pot. Put them in a really pretty dish. Made some little crusties around it. And toothpicks and uh, thank God I could always make a really great. And you know what? It's really funny because I don't drink. Um, I mean, I've had liquor before. I make a Tom Collins, but I put the melon liqueur in it. You know, the green melon liqueur. I love that. Oh, God, I got to get a bottle of that just to add things to it because it was so good. And I would make a melon dory Tom Collins. And um, it was the one drink that I knew I could do really, really good. Because we had a friend who was a chef. And he was like a hardcore alcoholic and liquor snob at the same time. Now, you think an alcoholic would drink pure grain alcohol if you gave it to him. But he was like, well... <sighs> I'm getting drunk 24-7, but I'm not drinking that crap. You know, you had to really know what you were doing. Anyway, he came over and he ate the sausages and went crazy. He was like, I can only stay for like an hour. I've got an event. Uh, I, you know, I just, I had to come and meet you because Marshall said that you were like the funniest girl on the planet. And I couldn't come up with a joke for shit. I couldn't. I couldn't talk. I wasn't relaxed. I couldn't tell a story. I couldn't tell you my name. I just sat there watching him pigging out one and two and three and four. He just kept going and going and going with the sausages. And then he finally, he was like, all right, now listen to me. One thing I have is a palate. He could literally... I mean, you know, people have done it to him, blindfolded him and given him goat and he'll eat it. But, um, and I'll tell you what was on it, you know, but it was driving him crazy. <laughs> and he was like, these are the best little, sauce. I mean, I, I need like a bucket of, did you make the sauce? I was like, yes, I made the sauce. What's in the sauce? And I just, I couldn't tell him. So after he left, Marshall and the boys were just laughing their asses off. And we were all dancing around the coffee table, you know, acting all goofy, going, oh, we had Chef so-and-so at our house. And he liked my little sausages. And Marshall finally was like, okay, that's it. That's it. And I fell on the couch and he sat right on top of me and the other two did too. We're not getting up until you tell us what was in the sauce. And I was like, I'm not telling you. And they're like, then they start tickling you and you're thinking, oh God, okay, I'm going to pee all over. This is not a little squirt. This is like all over the couch. There will be a flood. We will have to call people. 
I better tell them before, you know, because I can't stand being tickled. If I get tickled for one second, I'm like princess running water, you know. Anyway, I told him it was barbecue and Pepsi. <laughs> they were like, what? Barbecue and what? I was like, well, we were at a Coca-Cola. I needed something sugary, you know, to to balance the acid and to caramelize the the sausages and all we had was Pepsi and he, they were like oh my god they were screaming everywhere and we had so much fun and it was one of our best days but you see these guys appreciate um people who come and hang molding and they I mean they would hire a guy to come in and hang a picture on the wall you know and I mean at some point back to the main point of my story which God only knows I'm going way long now um when in your life do you start saying write a check and get it done. Just get it done. And don't drive everybody crazy with your thing. So on that note, I'm going to leave you. I diamond painted nothing. I'm so sorry. Uh, all of this is color blocking, you guys. I'm probably going to be done with maybe two rows by the end of today if I don't go in the pool. <laughs> um... Have a great, great afternoon. Get the little weenies and cook some. You do a little sugar, a little bourbon, and you kind of, and a little butter, and you melt that down, and you, you kind of want to caramelize the sausage a little bit with the Pepsi, and then add some barbecue and let it go slow and low, and I dare you to try it. I just dare you. You'll gain five pounds. It's not my fault. I'm, I'm letting you go unsupervised. I cannot supervise you guys all the time. But it was a fun recipe, and um, it impressed somebody who I thought was going to be unimpressible. You know, because in real life, I can't really say his name because it would be kind of rude. But in real life, you know, he's one of those guys that everybody loves, but in real life, he's kind of an asshole. <laughs> I mean, really, kind of an asshole. You know, and he doesn't even like dogs. I don't know why I have any use for somebody who doesn't like dogs. But it was a moment in my life, and I mastered it. So master the little moments. Don't be scared of them. Take it a little bite at a time, and you get that done, and then you can move on to the next thing. But I'm at the point in my life where I think I need to start writing checks to get shit fixed around here <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know the project uh craft room so that i can do more face-to-face -face time and not have dog bowls and and you know dumb and dumber back there on the bed barking at me um i don't know it keeps getting put on hold and i'm getting a little impatient with that too um so help me out what do you guys think Tell me. I want to know. Anyway, have a great day. Shine on, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. And if you want to buy me a coffee, oh, well, girl, I could use about a gallon of coffee right now. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Shine on. Shine, shine.